Did you know that you can grieve the Holy Spirit by the way that we live, by the things that we do, even the things that we say? Uh, today, what we're going to do is we're going to dive a little bit into the Word of God and see how we grieve the Holy Spirit by the things that we do. And these are a few things that we should avoid as believers in Christ so that we don't grieve Him and so that we don't suppress the Holy Spirit in our lives. Uh, the main scripture that we'll be taking from today is uh, Ephesians chapter 4. And the main verse actually is verse 30. But I'm going to read from verse 29. And it says that, Let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. Then verse 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for on the day of redemption. When you hear something like this, you will think to yourself, how can we as finite beings and people make an almighty and all-powerful God sad or make him grieve? When we look in the translation, the Greek translation of, of the word grieve in um, Ephesians chapter 4, the, the word grieve is actually translated to the Greek word lipe, lipe, which talks about pain or grief but can only be described or experienced in a way that when two people are deeply in love with each other. So that's the only way that that grief can be experienced. And anytime we look at the scriptures, we always have to look at the context that it's using to try to explain what the Bible is trying to say. So when we say lipe or grief, we're talking about something, uh, a, a deep grief that comes only from two people who are desperately in love with each other. So let's use the example of a husband and a wife, right? A, a husband and a wife are in a, a, a marriage relationship. Um, but if someone cheats and goes and defiles the marriage um, covenant, what happens is there's now a deep grief. There is a deep pain that either the husband or the wife feels concerning what their spouse or what their loved one has done to them. See, the reason this is so important is because God loves us so much that if we were to do anything against him, he would feel that grief and he would feel that pain. Yes, God would feel that pain through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit would feel that pain. And the reason that he would feel this pain is because we're going to get to the foundation of this. The foundation is that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. That's why we don't say that, you know, when people hear about the Trinity, they try to say that there's three gods, um, this, this, and that. But no, the, it's one God. When we talk about the Trinity, it's one God manifested in three persons. So three personalities. There is the Father, there is the Son, there is the Holy Spirit. They are one God. It's one. But they manifest themselves in three different personalities, right? So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is not just some electrifying power. He's not just some, some, some thing that's there, but he's a person with a personality. He has a will. He has a desire. Um, he has feelings. And, and that's the, the, that's the crazy thing about all of this, right? The Holy Spirit can feel. So when we sin against God, God has some sort of pain through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit feels what we do. He feels what we do. And the Holy Spirit can even be lied to. We, 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 you know, in the book of Acts, where it says that they lie to the Holy Spirit and then they drop down dead, right? He, he's a person with a personality. Um, and that's crucial for us to understand when we are talking about grief or grieving the Holy Spirit. See, let's get into a few things that grieve the Holy Spirit, right? Uh, I know that's what you came here for. So uh, I'm going to talk about maybe seven or eight things that grieve the Holy Spirit. And these are things that we should stay away from as believers. All right. The first thing, uh, when we look at uh, Ephesians chapter four, the verse that we just read, the first thing that we see there is when you live like a pagan, meaning that you live like 
a worldly person or you live like somebody who does not acknowledge or respect God, you have your own way of doing things, you live like an unbeliever, that grieves the Holy Spirit. And the reason that grieves the Holy Spirit is because now you have become friends with the world, right? If you have become friends with the world, that means you cannot become a friend with God because God and the world do not go together. You can't be 50-50. You either have to put your foot in with God or take your foot out. And that's why the Bible talks about being lukewarm. We hear this so many times about, you know, he says, if you're lukewarm, I'll spit you out of my mouth because you either have to be hot or you got to be cold. You got to be with God or you got to be with the world. So as a believer, if you live like a pagan, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. He feels some sort of deep, immense pain because your, your, your alliance or allegiance is not with him because it's with the world. And you are enjoying the things of the world. You are having pleasure with the things of the world. And you are forsaking that intimacy with the Holy Spirit that you are supposed to have. You're supposed to have a deep level of commitment and association with God. But you forbid that and have thrown that away for rather a relationship with the world. I want you to understand that one thing the Bible says is that the devil is the prince of the air or the, the prince of this earth. Right. He, 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 he rules the things and the systems of this world. So if you are engaging in friendship with the world, let, 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 let's let's get deeper here. That means that you're engaging and in friendship and relationship with the devil. And if you do that, then that means that he has you and, and, and there's no way there can be fellowship with the devil and, and have fellowship with God. So the first thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is living like a pagan because you are now in association with the world and have put your allegiance with them. The second thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is lying, lying. And listen, I know many of us, hey, I'm not going to lie to you here. Uh, you know, uh, many of us are, you know, we used to be liars, right? Um, and sometimes it happens. Sometimes it happens. But for the habitual liar, right, the, the person who consistently lies and enjoys lying and doesn't feel any way about it, this grieves the Holy Spirit. And God hates this so much to the fact that he actually mentions that he hates it. When we look in the book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 22, and we look at the seven sins that God mentions that he hates, he says that lying lips are an abomination to the Lord, but those who act faithfully are his delight. God hates lying and God hates liars. Yeah, I'm going to say that. He hates liars. People who make false oaths or people who, who say false things. So listen, lying is so dangerous that it can get somebody killed, right? Lying is so dangerous that it can spoil somebody's image. It can ruin somebody's life. That's how, that's how serious lying is. And God hates people who lie. God hates liars and he hates lying. He hates bearing, he hates people who bear false witness against others because of how dangerous it is. And the thing we have to understand too is that the spirit of God is the spirit of truth. So if you are a liar and you claim to have the spirit of truth, that's a huge contradiction here. Right? That's a huge contradiction. If the spirit of truth is in you, then you should not be a liar. And if you do lie, it's a completely against his nature. And that's what grieves him. See, as believers, let us avoid lying. Let us avoid things that are, 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 are not true. Um, let us speak truth. Let us be people of integrity. Um, let us avoid anything that may cause us to lie. See, if you know you're a liar, right? You, one thing you just got to do is just be quiet. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the way to practice not lying. You, you just got to be quiet. Stop, stop talking so much. Because you know one thing about me when I was young, <clears throat> I don't even know I used to do it, but sometimes it's, I just used to talk so much and just create, create things up, like make things up. 
I just used to make them up. And that's lying. And the things that you make up now people are hearing and they're going to think that that's the truth. But it's not. And then you have to keep up the lie with another lie. Right? Lying does not honor God and lying grieves the Holy Spirit. Let us be a people who are people of truth. And once you are a person of truth, you are in alignment with the Holy Spirit. The third thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is anger. Anger. And and I'm going to say this. For a lot of, you know, anger is for everybody. But for a lot of young black men um, who grew up in specific neighborhoods and specific areas, um, anger is a huge issue. Anger, anger is so dangerous. Anger gets people killed. Anger gets people in jail. Um, anger gets people's lives ruined. Um, anger, anger gets people hurt, right? And the anger I'm talking about here is not just a normal anger, like, oh, you, you, you know, like some people have a right to be angry for certain things, but then there's an uncontrollable anger, uncontrollable anger, which causes chaos, right? God does not like or honor anger of such sort because God speaks against people who have rage and are, are easily angered. People who are easily, um, you know, angered to the point where they start yelling and screaming and shouting. And, 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 and people who are angry people tend to slander other people, they, meaning that they, they, they speak evil of others, right? That's what anger does. It causes you to speak evil of somebody, even if the person hasn't done something uh, that you're even saying just because you're angry, you, you just blot out a bunch of stuff. That's not even true. Also with a lot, right? In anger. So God does not appreciate anger, uh, uncontrollable anger. Uh, and that's where even in the fruit of the spirit, we were doing a study on this the other day. We talked about how every believer needs to have self-control. Every believer should have gentleness. These are fruit of the spirit. This, these are characteristics that come when the Holy Spirit is in you, right? If you have uncontrollable anger where you, you have no self-control, that's a big problem. That's a big problem that needs to be dealt with because um, a lack of self-control can completely destroy your life. And when it comes to anger, Somebody who is always angry to the point of vengeance, um, beating up people, killing. These are, are people who the Lord actually dislikes. Yes, I'm going to go so far and say that. God does not love people who love violence. God does not love people who love killing. He does not love them. I know there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a saying going that God loves, the, God loves the sinner but hates the sin. But I'm, I'm being honest here. According to scripture, at least, God does not love people who are always calling on violence. He does not like those people. These are people that God actually hates. Yes, that's what the scriptures mention there. But let's be a people who do not just call on vengeance every day who have uncontrollable anger. See, this is something that you have to suppress in your life if you want the Holy Spirit to move in the way he wants to move. Uh, you know, some of you may be listening to you right now thinking to yourselves that, man, I really got this anger issue. And I want you to deal with it. Deal with it as soon as possible through the power of the Holy Spirit because he wants to move in your life, but he cannot move the way he wants to move if you allow the spirit of uncontrollable anger to continually rule in your life. I hope that makes sense. The fourth thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is stealing. Stealing, once again, you know, um, uh, for, for some of us, you know, where we come from and things like that, stealing wasn't such a big, it wasn't, it wasn't such a big deal. But stealing is is something that grieves the Holy Spirit because now you are taking something that was earned by somebody, like somebody earned it, somebody worked hard for it, and you are taking that thing 
from them. God does not like the idea of you taking something that does not belong to you. Something that somebody worked so hard for, you have no right to touch that thing. And if you do that, that grieves the Holy Spirit, right? And it's, it, I even go so far to say that God doesn't even, God doesn't appreciate the fact that people who even work hard, they work, they, 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 they work a, a job that God has given to them and they don't even honor God in giving to him. That's also stealing. That grieves the Holy Spirit. So when the Holy Spirit is supposed to move in your life, see, as believers, we believe that the Holy Spirit moves in our, like holistically over our lives. So for instance, he, the Holy Spirit can move in our finances. But if you are stingy with your money and you can't even give a small portion to the Lord, I'm not even talking about tithes here. This is not even just giving in general. If you're not even able to just give to the Lord freely, you're a thief. You're a thief because God was, God gave you strength. God has opened a way for you to get what you, what you need. And let's, let's forget the tithe, just even giving in general. If you can't even do that, then you grieve the Holy Spirit in the aspect of your finances. You shouldn't be mad and you shouldn't be surprised if things aren't working out for you because you're stealing and God doesn't appreciate that, right? God, God, God works in, 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 in principles, he works in ways that we have to understand. And when we do those things that he's commanded of us, then we're going to see him move in our lives the way we want him to move. Let's not make stealing a thing in the life of the believer. Like make it, make it, uh, something that's like, <clears throat> sorry. We need to move away from stealing. We need to move away from doing things that dishonor God and let the Holy Spirit move in our lives the way he wants to move. All right, when we when we put these things aside, right? We're going to see the Holy Spirit move in our lives in such a magnificent and very powerful way. The thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is stealing. <coughs> Another thing that grieves the Holy Spirit, or the fifth thing that grieves the Holy Spirit, is cursing. Cursing. I was watching a, um, you know, a, a video uh, the other day, not the other day, some time ago, and it was talking about believers and cussing. And many people were saying that, you know, for some of us, it's okay because of the culture that we're in. You know, they use these words, and that's how you relate to the people. Right. But for me, uh, the one thing we have to understand is that even though we are here in this world and we may be in various cultures, there's a culture that overrides every other culture. And that's the kingdom culture. And that's the that's the that's the culture of the scriptures, the culture of the kingdom of God. So the overarching rule of God, that's what that's what rules over our lives. That's what governs our life. So. If we are believers, there's specific ways that we got to talk. There's specific ways we have to live. And that's, that's not even debatable, right? I don't think that you talking dirty, you making dirty jokes, um, you saying swear words and those things, those are, are things that you should just allow in your life because that's what the culture does. You're bigger than the culture because you're in Christ. You don't need to, you don't need to come bring yourself down to that level. To do what they do so that you fit in. No, you don't got to fit in. Be who you are in Christ. And let them see you shine bright wherever you are. Right? It, it, it's, it's important for us that we must not find ourselves trying to, to be like the world so that they can hear us. No. See, the, the, the one thing that you have to understand about the world is the world doesn't, the world doesn't look at the people that do every thing that everybody else does. They look at people who do special things, significant things, right? And that's the truth. They look at people who do significant things. 
and the backing that I have is um, verse 29 when it comes to the, the scripture, um, chapter 4 that we were reading. It says, do not use foul or abusive language. Do not use foul or abusive language. This is crucial because sometimes we find ourselves doing that. Sometimes we find ourselves saying certain things that we shouldn't say. But when we speak specific words that do not are not pleasing to God, we suppress the Holy Spirit in our lives because words are powerful. Words are a major part of our lives. The things that we speak are life or death. So if we speak abusive things, abusive language, we're not speaking life into our situation. We're not speaking life into ourselves. We're rather speaking death into our situation, the death to the things around us. So that even means that the music that we listen to, if it, if it has cursing in there continuously, you may think that you're a, a strong believer or whatever like that, but those things, because you are, li- now you're not, for the, for, the, for the mature believer, you're not living a life um, trying to flee from sin because you're running away from hell. No, you're living a life pleasing God because he's just your delight now. You, you want to please him. You want to live for him. You want to do what makes him happy because now your nature is like his nature, right? So you shouldn't even be enjoying music that's completely glorifying things of the world, right? And, 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 and I'm being careful here because obviously there's some music that's just general music that's like, it's whatever. But then there's some music that's like really abusive, really bad. And if those are the music that we're listening to as believers, then we got to check ourselves. I actually believe that the wrong music can affect your spiritual life. 100%. In the same way, good music can affect your spiritual life. So, cursing is a major thing that grieves the Holy Spirit. Let us move away from cursing. Let us move away from things that are, are well, words that are not pleasing to the Lord, that, 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 that bring down people. Let's actually use words that lift up people and encourage people. Number six, the sixth thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is bitterness, bitterness. And the definition of bitterness is an embittered and resentful spirit that refuses to be reconciled. See, bitterness grieves the Holy Spirit Because it's the Holy Spirit's job of reconciliation. So if bitterness is embittered and resentful spirit that refuses to be reconciled, and the Holy Spirit's job is to reconcile, then that means that bitterness has to grieve the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is not able to do the job he wants to do when bitterness is alive. See, some people just like to be mad. I mean, I know there's some of those people that you've come across. Some people just like to be mad. They live for conflict. They live for arguing. They live for fighting. That's just who they are as people. And this is the one thing we have to understand that even though that's who they are, that's sin. We can't just allow them to just say, oh, that's who I am. So I'm, 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 gonna, I'm not going to change. No, it's wrong. It's wrong to live like that. It's wrong to do that. If you're unrepentant of that, it's wrong. You're living a life of sin. See, the sad thing is that bitter people rarely want to keep it to themselves. What bitter people do is they share the bitterness with anyone they come across. At school, at church, at home. They share that bitterness around. But bitterness needs to be dealt with. Because bitterness is something that grieves the Holy Spirit. You, you, you want to have to be able to reconcile. Being reconciled is a good thing. To, to, to hold bitterness in your heart, anger, resentfulness, these things weigh you down. You're not even able to function in the way that you want to function because of all these feelings and things that you have inside of you. I actually want to tell you if you're listening to me right now, 
Remove bitterness from your life. Overcome bitterness. And things that you need to, to reconcile with, do that. And I'm telling you, you're going to be free. You're going to have the best life that you've ever lived. And, and keep my word on that. I, I, I owe you money if that doesn't happen. All right? <laughs> and number seven. The seventh thing that grieves the Holy Spirit is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. The Spirit grieves if one is unforgiving because forgiveness is the very thing that God did to us. So if we are not forgiving people, then that means that we shouldn't even deserve forgiveness from God. How can you be a believer that does not operate in the spirit of forgiveness? Because through Christ, what he did on the cross, we have been forgiven from every sin that we have ever committed. See, to, to, to operate in freedom, to live a life of freedom, you must be able to tap in to the grace to forgive. Uh, if you are not able to forgive, you will never have that freedom that you want to have. If you're not able to forgive, you're never going to have that liberty that you want to have. And the Holy Spirit would always be grieved to the point where he's never able to move in the fullness of his capacity in your life. This is very important. If you want the fullness of the Holy Spirit to move in your life, you cannot hold in unforgiveness. The whole way. You got to move on from that. And the things that anyone has done to you, you just got to let it go. I'm telling you, once again, when you let those things go, you're going to see the hand of God move in your life. In your life. So my friends, listen, I, 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 I don't ever want you to harbor anything in your, in your heart. Because once again, that weighs you down. And that takes you from where you're supposed to be. Don't let, don't, let, don't let these things that grieve the Holy Spirit push you down. Stop you. Slow you down from moving in your destiny. No way. Ah, unforgiveness of what somebody did to me 20 years ago? No. Don't do that. Don't do that. Trust me. The last thing that grieves the Holy Spirit, and this is major, major, especially amongst our generation, well, I believe it's probably in every generation, but our, our generation is crazy right now. Sexual morality. Sexual immorality. See, God has given us clear-cut instructions on what he wants us to do in the terms of marriage and relationship. If you are not in a marriage situation, as a believer, sex is a no-no. If you are not in a marriage relationship, see, lust becomes a sin, right? See, naturally speaking, these things God has given to us. The desire to look at my wife or the desire to want her, that's natural. But when you're out of line with God and you're not doing it by his commandments or his instruction, now it becomes sin. And what it does Sexual morality actually ruins your life. And no one can argue with me that there. No one can argue with me. Now, I remember the great Miles Monroe, he was talking about why he never had sex before marriage. And he was saying that, you know, like, I was thinking about the consequences. Like, imagine if I did that and he had a child. You know, as a believer, you're not, you're not going to go abort the child. No way. As a believer, I know you heard that. You're not going to go abort the child. No, you're, you're, you're going to do what you can, make things work, raise the child to the best of your ability, but you're going to suffer. You're going to have this, this lady around. Maybe you don't even, maybe you didn't even like her like that. And you, it was just a one-time situation, but now she's in your life forever. You, you can't get rid of her. You can't get rid of him. They're there forever. And now the consequences become way more then if I just waited and kept to myself, I wasn't going to die. Right? Sexual morality has this way of, 
of turning your life around. And and the worst thing about our time now is that on social media, on television, internet, everywhere we turn, there is sexual morality there. In movies, there's soft porn in, in, in on our phones, like just everywhere. And this is something that we have to overcome. By all means, if you have to, if you have to turn everything off, do that. Because this is a matter of your soul. This is a matter of the Holy Spirit moving in you in the way you, he, you want him to move. And he's grieved when we do things that dishonor him. And sexual morality is a major one. It suppresses you. It holds you down. It makes you unmotivated. You're not able to accomplish all that you need to accomplish. You're not able to move to your destiny the way you want to move because this weight of sin is holding you down. So my brother, my sister, thank you for, for listening to what I had to say today. Um, I believe that if you are able to conquer these things, if you're able to suppress them in your life, as you suppress them, you're going to see the Holy Spirit move up more and do great things in your life and help you in your walk with the Lord. I greatly appreciate you. Thank you for listening. And we'll be back again.